Hello, my name is Kevin Jeffers. I live in Los Angeles, traveled around the world, and experienced many interesting events and circumstances, mostly starting when I was a young, very, very young person. Um, as early as 18 years old, I was first introduced to um, life regression, past life remembrance via hypnosis. And I believe that that is what opened the door for me to experience much, much more. So as the years have passed and I, become, I became more comfortable, more knowledgeable in these things as I experienced more, and it evolved eventually into energetic healing, which then became life readings, but that wasn't a focus. The, the healing was my focus for a long, long time. And I realized that when I started going out, and I mean out, my consciousness would be going out from my body, I began to experience some very interesting visual things. And the visual things that I, I saw were people that had passed on. It's as though there's a magnetic or energetic ring around the earth in which these souls are trapped. Um, and that, other than feeling a, an enormous sense of compassion, I studied what was this? Was it my imagination? Was I encountering just disembodied incarnates? What was, what was happening here? Well, <clears throat> as I moved closer into the experience, I saw that these were these were souls, many, many different kinds of forms of consciousness, souls who were trapped by their lack of understanding, their lack of knowledge of what had just happened to them. Some were in denial, some were experiencing the after effect of drug overdose, some had died violently and were shocked. And as this went on, I, I saw more and more that First, there was a, a huge capability of the human to expand their awareness into different levels of consciousness, but I also saw there was a way to be of assistance to people that were what I call trapped. Sometimes I use the word stuck. So as this went on and I started talking more and more about this to various people, and over the years, more than 50 years, my experiences have increased and I've added depth, color to what I do see. And that has gone on to the current day when I decided to finally write a book and come out from this very tight enclosure that I've been operating within, which is privacy, and being willing to go out and share these experiences. One of the things that I'm going to talk about today is the near-death experience. Going out from your consciousness is like a near-death experience. It actually happened to me rather um, quick. When I was in my mid-30s, I went through a, a life crisis, and I found myself lifting out of my body, truly an, an out-of-body experience for the first time. Out-of-body experience has been different than shifting consciousness to higher planes of, of reality, the out-of-body is a very impactful physical experience. And as I lifted out from my body, because I really didn't want to be there anymore, that's another story all by itself, I went out and passed through these souls that were stuck. And it was very saddening and it was upsetting. It was incredibly noisy. But the commonality of, of what I experienced was they didn't know where to go. They were stuck inside of their head about where they were, what was happening, or they had some very primal linkages back to earth that they didn't want to give up. Maybe they were just enjoying their life and they didn't think this was fair or a family member needed assistance in releasing. Or sometimes these souls just go back to earth and help their friends, giving advice, sharing energy, 
um, creating a, a security net around them. So as I transitioned to this, I started seeing people that I knew who had passed. I saw my elderly in-laws, I saw family members, um, and still, I didn't know where to go. And this was the frightening part of the near-death experience, is that you don't always just go out and go to the light. Sometimes you have to struggle through these rings of energy that are really not conducive to shooting into shooting or going out or transitioning to the light. So I just continued to go on and on. And finally, I got it. The problem with this was, was myself. I wasn't willing to turn myself over to the light, what I call spirit. And when I made that resolution, I jumped out of this ring of confusion and headed towards what I would call a light. Uh, in the days that I experienced this, Raymond Moody hadn't done his research. People had not documented near-death experiences. So I really didn't have a conception or preconception of what I was going to experience other than I wanted to go there. So as I came closer to this pinpoint of light that expanded into a, a light of brilliance, I realized that I was approaching heaven. I was approaching spirit and God. I really didn't know if there was a God at that time, but there is. And as I got closer and closer, I was very happy because I really didn't want to go back. I really didn't want to clean up the mess I made. It. I just wanted to go. I wanted to be released. And the closer I came to the light, finally there was a portal. I didn't see a tunnel. I saw a portal. And I went up to the portal. And I could see through the entrance to the portal, and I really liked what I saw. Beautiful colors, light, people chatting with each other, floating around, back and forth. Just amazing visuals. But as I went to step into the portal, a figure stepped out in front of me, a very bright, beautiful, soothing angel. That's all I could think of. This is an angel who put their hand on my chest and said, this is not your time and gave me a push, which slammed me back into my body very rudely, but very dramatically. And as the years went on, and I, I would think about this a lot because I didn't yet fully understand it, my sense of it was now is not the time. There are things for me to do. Um, I'm an artist. I'm a businessman. I would miss making my art. I would miss making sculptures, having, making paintings, writing poetry. And any thought that I had of my life going into a book would have been finished if I had transitioned through the portal into the light. So I see now in hindsight, that was probably a good decision by spirit to not allow me to, to progress to move into the light because my work here was not done. Oddly enough, as shocking as the experience was, I felt very happy, very satisfied. But I, I spent the next tens, tens of years thinking, why was I rejected? And what was I gonna do with the fact that I was pushed away from the portal? And I decided, well, I'm gonna go back. I tend to be very, very curious about things. I'd had the training to, for spiritual healing, energetic healing. I had the experience of shifting consciousness out of my body. I had the experience of remembering past lives. But I really wanted to know what the next thing was. And the next thing was understanding and going to the light and to, and to respectfully volunteer or ask for, ask them, the angelics, as I now call them, can I be of assistance? Can I be of help? I realized that focusing on the experience was not the right way to go about this for me. What the right way for me to do is to volunteer my service. And that I did. How I found my way back without dying 
without going through a traumatic experience was, was to me very simple. Energy has a signature. The portal of light has its own signature that draws the soul in when they are ready to transition into the next aspect of their consciousness. So I focused on that energy signature and I went back to the portal. And this time I was allowed through. So it was a, it was the interrupted experience of light became a fulfilled experience of light. I stepped in through what I would consider a waiting room. People lining up to go into the earth to incarnate, people stepping out from their incarnation. Um, the resources there were varied and very thorough. There were many opportunities for self-healing, for reviewing past life records to understand fully who I am. And that linkage to the light is what has dominated my own experiences for a very long time. And it allowed me to go back again and again and again, of which I have done on a regular basis. Um, I've learned how to wake up at night and meditate and move out and come back without losing too much sleep. So as I volunteered for service, this one thing that was special to me, that was unique to my personality, temperament, and energy, was to go back to those souls that were stuck and assist them into the light. And I said uh, to myself, no, that's good. I, I like that. I can stand behind that. I can devote a long, long time to doing this. And that's what I did. So I found that the, the near-death experience, the traumatic death of temperament and of life, and of positioning and the physical world no longer held me. What I did learn as I went back to that portal was how to help people through the barriers that wrap around the earth that hold the souls contained within energy, which is an emotional energy generated by their entrapment, and to learn how to pull them out. So this took a long time to understand this. I didn't have any guidance, particularly at this point in my life. And I would talk to people, souls that have passed and invite them into the light. And that was a very satisfying experience. It expanded to children. I have a special affinity for children that have passed is generally they don't understand what's happening. If they're fortunate, a loved one or a family member or even an angelic themselves will come down and help them out. But many of them don't, under, don't understand. They don't know what's happening. And there's a high degree of confusion. And it wrenched my heart to listen to this. So I started to focusing on children. How can I help children, assist children to go through the, the process of transition, lifting out of the body to go to the light? where there were much higher qualified individuals who specialized in transitioning children, young people. So this went on for a long time and is something I continue to do today. But now the, the emphasis has shifted from death by, by use of chemical products, death by violence, death by the hand of relatives and parents to entering into war zones. For this, probably a year and a half ago, I was pulled to Russia and the Ukraine, which I found interesting because I'm rarely pulled anywhere. I'm asked to go somewhere. I was pulled. And then I landed at least my consciousness landed. My my body was back in the in the meditation chair. My consciousness landed in an environment of extreme pain and anguish, and an astonishing number of people that had that had died, not only recently in the war there, but also had died before. It, 
I saw that the Ukraine-Russian border had been had gone through many violent transitions as conquerors moved through that area and the people reconquered their territories. There were religious armies that went through the Ukraine and World War II hit it very hard as well as Russia. And so I saw that there was a depth of suffering in that location that did not touch anywhere else I'd ever been. It was, it was stunning for me. So understanding that I had things to do, that I was pulled for a reason, I then talked to, and when you're there, you really don't talk. It's like sending energy forms or energy packets. You articulate your message via the configuration of energy that is particularly you, and asking them through these data packets, what happened? And for many, many people, they didn't know what happened. Their, their buildings were bombed out, their relatives' bodies were lying next to them or close to them, and they didn't know what was happening because it happened so quickly, so stunningly. And this is how I've been spending my time in the last year and a half, is going back and pulling the souls of young children and older, older people out from the death passage into the light. And it's always into the light. Not everyone wants to go. Not everyone understands. But sometimes you have to have a little chat about, okay, your Aunt Mary is there. Your Uncle Pavlov is there. And just encouraging them to release from the bondage that they're experiencing on the earth plane. So what I see in, the, in hindsight, looking back through my life, is that the experience of touching the portal, the light of the portal, was not only life-changing to me, was transforming, but also gave me a path going forward, which is to continue this work. The near-death experience, and I've talked with many people that have had the near-death experience, generally is a shocking thing. Their reality is blown apart. Um, they have change their phys the energetic configuration of their physical body. There is no longer seeing things the way they saw them before because there's a, a much greater depth and understanding. I invite the people that have experienced this to step away from the experience and to move on to find out how they can use their newly acquired skills to help other people. As we all know, at least in this point in time, the planet Earth is in, in deep difficulty due to various reasons, greed, exploitation, um, self-concern. And we are literally living in a very, very dark and difficult time. And what's entrapping our energy is ourselves, our thought patterns, our experience of reality is fairly twisted because we're not God directed. We're not light directed. Speaking the word spirit brings a certain concern and worry to many, many people. And in that environment and in, in now in this place, there are many, many souls reaching out for help. I would invite the people that have experienced, had near-death experiences to pull their attention away from the experience, let it go, bless it, forgive it, let it go, and see how they can use their own special talents to help other people, how they can move on from the near-death experience into the life-giving experience of sharing yourself. Okay, thank you.